afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Friday, May 27, 2022, a little after 3 p.m. Eastern. The ego will not allow you to see the reality because it says I am separate. The moment the tree thinks it is separate from the earth, it starts dying. The tree has to know that it exists only as an extension of the earth. Then it is nourished and fed by the earth. Only then is it at home. Osho. Especially right now, this world is filled with people who feel they've lost their way. Many are facing divorces drowning in bills, cannot sleep, massively overweight, deeply depressed, eating dead food, deeply unhealthy. Perhaps they've lost a family member, their soulmate, or even their house, financial security, or worse, the hope for a better future. Life can get so intense at times that some people feel they have even lost their mind. When it comes down to it, we have all experienced some form of loss. Yet whatever it is that we lose along this grand adventurous journey, no matter what it is, we must also realize that it is a precious gift teaching us the sacred art of letting go. The ultimate truth here is that we cannot take anything with us. And I, I, don't, I don't know when we leave the body. There are no cell phones, emails, bills, car payments, or bank accounts outside the body. There is just love. Pure, deep, eternal love and an eternity of time to enjoy it. When the body that you are in has served its time here on earth and is done here, we take nothing with us but our own life experiences, love, and consciousness. So our life experiences, love and consciousness, are the most precious items that we are carrying right now. So, doesn't it make sense to choose to make them your number one priority over all your ego's needs, fears, wants, wishes, demands, and desires? We will find our life suddenly, that our life suddenly becomes much easier, sweeter, and simpler to live. We all need some guiding light to show us where to go in this life. This greatest light I've ever discovered was not in the outer world, yet deep inside at the very core of consciousness, the light of pure awareness. If you look close enough, you will see that it has a direct, consistent connection that is flowing to and from the actual God source itself. You could miss experiencing this amazing connection because you're paying more attention to your thoughts about it instead of the actual light of pure awareness. So simply place your attention only on pure awareness and nothing else. See what happens only on pure awareness, nothing else. Try it for the next few minutes and notice if something shifts in how spiritually connected you feel inside, often the moment when we forget about our brilliant light of awareness, the mind instantly takes over and tends to point itself towards its desires. It wants to achieve things, to be happy, successful, fulfilled, or heal negative experiences from the past as it believes these are the main reason why we are not happy today. Yet, these aren't the real reason why we continue this habit of remaining caught in some emotional gutter. 
The real reason why we remain stuck in yesterday's old news is because we haven't learned how to create a solid trusting connection with the God source, the source of absolute, deep, eternal love. We have forgotten that the God source is real, that it's instantly available, that it's here right now. Super easy to access, and the great golden secret, how we can all truly enjoy the precious, this precious life, again. We cannot fail at anything. We cannot fail at anything in this life when we are feeling connected with this great, deeply eternal loving source within when we are feeling our soul's natural connect, our natural, our soul's natural connection with it, we relax and start asking ourselves deeper questions like, "Why am I really here? What's the most enlightened thing I can do with my time? What can I do to live out my life's mission?" When we are feeling into our sweet supportive spiritual connection. We instantly stop complaining, let go of our demanding abrasive ego and start appreciating what is. Awakening the God source within is quite simple and really boils down to giving up our resistance to our connection with it giving up our resistance to our connection with it. As we investigate further inside ourselves, we can find places where we can start relaxing more about life and opening our hearts to trusting in life, this life, more and more and more. The God source is everywhere. There is no place or time you can find to escape from it. The task, then, is all about letting go of our resistance to its great unending love. A lot of bumper stickers out there. One in particular, life is the school and love is the lesson. Life is the school and love is the lesson. When we open the heart to trusting in the energy of deep eternal love, we begin learning the most important lesson we are here to learn. How to fully embrace, accept, and appreciate who and what we really are. We were not born just to tolerate our lives. We are here to celebrate, love, and embrace everyone and everything in it. When we stop dwelling on how we were wrong, how messed up we are, or wounded we are, by our past, we create a space for love to come in. Then we can start using our creative energy to enjoy feeling how deeply eternally loved we are and amazing it is to be alive. The secret to awakening the great God source within begins with a silence and sincere willingness to let in love to trust love, to allow love in whenever given, and welcome the vibration of feeling lovable. This willingness is what allows us to stop defending and protecting ourselves from any possibility of future pain. We forget to be ahead of this life, of people, right? We forget to be afraid of this life and of people, of taking risks, of creating intimacy, and getting hurt again. We, we, with just a little willingness to let in deep eternal love, we begin feeling more open, vulnerable, and excited to allow even more amazing and abundant experiences into our lives. This willingness to let in love is a huge step. And with it, we will realize just how beautiful, childlike, and tremendously innocent we all truly are. 
This life is the greatest school there is, and it's always going to be teaching us what we most need to know about ourselves. The experience of letting in love is founded in the feeling of trusting life. There is a part in you that wants to let in love and trust life more than anything, yet is skeptical, doubtful, prideful, or may not believe you are lovable. You may have a thousand reasons not to trust in life or love. It may feel more honest that you doubt yourself, others, and continue to protect yourself from trusting in anyone or anything. This is how the connection to the God source gets blocked. It can be quickly shifted, however. And this happens by simply relaxing your body, mind, and being willing to trust in how good it feels to trust again. Slowly, you will actually become more trusting, more open, honest, available, receptive, and eventually start feeling in your soul's direct connection to the God source again. The singer exists only in singing. The walker exists only in walking. So is the ego. The ego exists only in clinging, in possessing things, in dominating things. When there is no domination, no desire to dominate, no desire to cling, no desire to possess, the ego starts evaporating. Osho. Take a look at the planet. Without judgment, what do you see? You see a lot of the ego, don't you? So this coming week, I invite you to try a little experiment on yourself. Consider that your grand soul purpose in this life is simply to trust in every experience you are having within. Trust in every feeling, every thought, belief, emotion. Trust in your intuition, in each situation you're a part of. Trust so fully and deeply that everything inside of you relaxes completely. Watch how your mind and ego land or tend to resist trust at first. Let, and yet in time, they will slowly dissolve into it. Trust so fully and deeply that everything inside of you relaxes completely. And watch how your mind and ego tend to resist trust at first, yet in time they will slowly dissolve into it. When your trust is absolute on the inner world, it will overflow into everyone in your outer world. Trust in yourself first. And what is occurring within you is the right experience you're learning the most from. Making trust bigger than the actual thought, judgment, of, or life experience is the one, and it's one of the quickest ways to find the God source within you. Right now, tell yourself that it's possible to trust in yourself 100% this week. Imagine you are doing this and embracing the divine being you truly are. The simple energy of trusting in life is the secret to opening the doorway to the deeply eternal loving God source. It's really not a tough job if you consider or when you consider the other possible techniques others are doing to try and reach God. So I invite you, I challenge you, and I dare you to fully explore this experience of deep trust. Relax fully into it and let it spread all throughout your life. Take on this trusting invitation first thing in the morning. Feel that it's extremely safe to let down all your guards today. Walk around with a receptive, trusting heart, welcoming in this life with a big smile. Just try it for 24 hours. See what manifests. Explore the sensations of being open, welcome, and accepting with all beings, animals, plants, situations, experiences, and material things. And if so, fake it until you make it. 
if you need to. As we relax into this moment and become more open and available to this life, all our fears, phobias, and pains from the past cannot be found anymore. They are like shadows. They disappear when the sunlight enters. All your hardness and skepticism melts into this sea of this divine trusting energy. Do not estimate the magnitude of this simple trusting practice. It is powerful enough to transform yourself and everyone in your world. There's another great secret to instantly awaken your connection with the great God source within you. This is for those who find it absolutely impossible to let their guard down and trust anything at all. The sweet secret is to enter the black hole of emptiness inside you and let it empty out yourself completely. Merge with the emptiness, and it will help you let go of everything. Just surrender everything inside you and be free from everything. Let go of your attachment to everything, every thought, feeling you're having. Release your addictions, desires, compulsions, wishes, and beliefs into the empty unknown. Throw everything inside yourself into the emptiness until you're 100% empty. You won't be disappointed at what happens next. The next experience that manifests And this emptying out process is very liberating. When you are total and you're letting go, releasing it all into the emptiness, you create a fresh space for something brand new to enter you. When every hard, cold neurosis is out of the way, the pendulum tends to swing back towards feeling nurtured and nourished by life. The soft, warm, loving presence of your own soul steps in. You feel as if life is holding you so closely, warmly, and exquisitely. The emptiness suddenly becomes very full. and You feel as if you've become a newborn baby suckling on the great universal mother's breast. It feels good to know that the great sacred God source is here now waiting patiently for you to empty yourself out. This is one quick way to immediately reach into her. It's good to know that the magic of discovering the God source within happens in the simple, sweet presence of your own company. When you are truly alone, try out these techniques. Let yourself allow this awesome, indescribable God force pierced through your heart, soul, and consciousness. The pure God source energy is already penetrating you. You're simply not aware of it. The God source will never reject or deny you. It is always ready for you to open, wanting to move into you, and there's nothing you can do to change this. You must choose To always be aware, however, that the mind is always trying to make something happen. It will try to pave a straight, firm path towards what it thinks God is. Yet, it's this narrow mind habit which causes us to miss God every time. The universal God source is too vast, deep, and enormous for the mind to contain. The moment you empty your mind and let down your resistance to love, you discover how fun it is to bow down to the divine. It's in this moment that the God source flows into you. When you're the most surrendered still and in the most humble state of ecstasy. So if you will, go to a place where you're not going to be interrupted. I'm sure we all are. And the first thing that we care to do is relax these bodies that we are in. And we do that through the breath. 
easy in through easy and slowly in through the nose and easy and slowly out through the mouth. Breath is sacred. The breath keeps these bodies operating so that we, the gods, can stay in them and experience this wonderful life. Now, when you focus on your breath, you move yourself into the now. The now is not yesterday and it's not tomorrow. It's only right in the moment. Right in the moment. Moment to moment. Breath between heartbeats. And when you do do this, when you decide to do it, you leave the mind and ego alone. You still them. And you still the subconscious mind. Which means that they're there, but you're not interacting with them. You can know, you know this every time when you go into the now. Because th these are the things that happen to us when we're in the now. We don't have mind chatter. We don't have worry. We don't have stress. We don't have fear. We don't have anger. We don't have hatred. We don't have envy. We don't have revenge. We don't have hurriedness. We don't have any of it. It's complete silence. The now, moment to moment. And to be in the state of, in the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest, deepest, and the purest of the purest, purest, eternal gratitude. And to be gentle, kind, generous, and humble with oneself at all times. This is our bliss. This is the center of our being. This allows us to open the door to enter the room that the God that we are is in. And then we sit with the God that we are and commune. Now, we know we're not these bodies. These bodies hold and, and, and carry the gods that we are so we can experience the physical form of the body and life. We're not the character, the personality. We're not the color. We're not our belongings. We're not our status. We are the God in the body. Doesn't it make sense that we know the difference? See, we, we all know the difference. <coughs> the difference between being out there and in here. You see how easy it is for us to be drawn out there and not in here. And th that is the ego mind, okay? Wanting and having and having and wanting and wanting and having and having and wanting. Now, when you're in the now, you can watch the ego mind, subconscious mind. You don't judge it. You just watch how they operate. And this is the way we master them. So they become vehicles and tools for us to direct rather than them directing us. It allows you to know when, a, when, a, when there's a thought, right? You can identify the thought as an ego thought. You can immediately know that that's an ego thought. 
anything with wanting and wanting and more wanting and having and getting and wanting and more wanting and having and getting and wanting is the ego mind. But when we know this, we start to learn that, okay, so that's, that's I understand that. I, I, I choose, I, I choose to be in the heart mind, the God center. And that's a choice for each of us. You either are or you're not. Maybe not this lifetime. Maybe the next one. Who knows? Now, when you look inside this body that you're in, you will see seven balls of light. All different colors, all very vibrant, super, super bright, colorful, more so than the colors on this planet. These are called, on this planet, they're called chakras. Definition of chakra is wheel. Wheels of light. You, they're spirit etheric energy. You are spirit etheric energy. I'm impotently powerful, the God that you are. So we flow through these bodies. Why don't we heal them? Why don't we heal these bodies? We have the power to do so, hands down, because we are in the ego mind domain, yesterday and tomorrow, yesterday and tomorrow, tomorrow, yesterday, yesterday, tomorrow, past, future, future, past, past, future, future, past. That's why we don't heal them. We, we, we don't, we aren't aware of our power. So we're drawn to outside of ourselves to seek that which has always been, always will, ever beyond and forever within. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? We, we grow with outside of ourselves seeking answers to our questions. And all along, they're within us. All of it is. Not just a little bit. It's all there. And see, that's why it's got to be a choice. You don't stumble into it. No one forces you to do it. You, from your heart, your desire to go into the now and, and go to within the journey within you and not outside of it. The perspective totally changes. You view things differently. Things that would normally get you upset in the ego mind state won't even cause you to flicker in the heart mind state. Things that you stress, fear, worry about in the ego mind state won't even cause a flicker in the heart mind state. It, they're the opposites. This is what you're looking at yin yang, where there's a pot, you know, where there's one, there's another, there's always an opposite. And the opposite is the heart mind from the ego mind. What's the opposite of pain, suffering, worrying, stress, anger, hatred, revenge? Love. To put it, put it simply, You can choose the heart mind, which is peace, love, joy, bliss, contentment, or you can choose the ego mind, which is pain, sorrow, suffering, anger, hatred, worry, stress, fear. You see how big of a difference that is. And it's a choice. Your choice. Each of our choices. No one else's. So you can see why. How could you ever point the finger at anything outside of you? When it's all you. It's a big difference. Now you look at, you're standing in front of three paths, right? 
and each has a gold circle. And you look at the pads. You're in the center one. For now. You look on the left and you see the past. The right future. Now you do know you notice how the paths have been formed. You see the trees have formed canopy over each path, golden shimmering the leaves, the bark, the branches, and you see that the path itself is a vibrantly brilliant emerald green flaming light. And it appears to be grass. You do notice that on the path on the left, right, the pass, is, is really worn. It's been used. And the path on the right, the future, really worn. It's been used. But the path you're standing on, the now, looks like it was just created. It looks brand new. And and to, to understand what that means, why, is because the majority of us are controlled and mastered by the ego mind. The ego mind does not exist in the now. It only exists in the past and the future. So therefore, it does everything it can to keep you out of the now. And understand, the ego is not your enemy. Okay. So the ego is actually a positive motivator. Ego mind is because it motivates you to go within and stay in the now rather than to go into its territory because we've all experienced it over and over again. Worry, stress, and fear, disappointment, anger, some fun and bliss at times, but for the majority of the time, it's a tug-a-pole, tug-a-pole. So then we begin uh, through the motivation of that and the knowing, we start practicing going within and staying in the heart-mind and mastering the ego mind, the subconscious mind. Now, we all go into the past from d different times. You know, we reminisce, um, nostalgia. Many families keep keepsakes that have been handed down through the generations. And it the draws the energy and the memories. And so we'll go into the past. We enter our great hall. Every one of us have one. Great hall is just massive. You know, the, the subconscious mind records everything and plays it back. So this great hall is subconscious mind. So when you... You open that door and you turn on the light and you look for walls and ceilings. It is so massive and vast, you can't see the ceilings or the walls. But, you know, we do, we will go on to the, the, the shelves and the drawers and we'll pull out some movies and some books and some pictures and we'll sit in an easy chair in front of a screen and we'll watch some of the movies and read some of the books and look at some of the pictures. And we reminisce, oh, that was a great time. I had. We had so much fun. I wouldn't mind doing that again. We also review for reference purposes and guidance some of the things we've done that we may are looking at to do again, but we don't care to do it the way we did it the first time because we know it didn't work. So it's not really a negative because we don't stay there long. We just use it as reference uh, and guide. And then we put everything away. We turn off the light. We shut the door and we move forward in life. And on occasion, we'll revisit. Some of us, however, will stay there a long time. And I don't believe that it is conscious. I believe it's unconscious. So they'll, they'll stay there so long, but they'll take that past, they'll bring it into a future that doesn't exist. They'll create that future from that past, and they'll relive that past in that future. This is why a lot of people will say, no matter what we do, we always seem to end up here. Now, a lot of us, all of us, one time, shape, form, or another, we go into the future. But see, we don't know that the future, we, we're creating our futures in the now. We create our own futures. And... The future is written in sand, not in stone. 
so you can change your future anytime you wish. And many don't know that. So you're creating the future in the now, but yet you see the path on the right, the future, and so he's I'm going to go, I want to know some things. I want to know what's going to happen here and how this is going to happen and everything. Because we get curious, ego mind. And so we jump in there and we look around and we start asking external authorities, astrologers, tarot card, card readers, tea leaf readers, palm readers, pendulums, all kinds of stuff. And so we ask, and we say, what's, what's going to happen in three months for me? You know, when, am I going to get a lot of money? Will I have enough money to pay my bills? <laughs> will, will, I have, uh, uh, will I be able to get that house or that dwelling? Will, will I be able to get these things? When, when am I going to get them? How am I going to get them? Am I going to be evicted? Am I going to have this happen? Am I going to have that happen? Because we want to know. Because ego mind keeps saying, you got to know. you got to know these things. you got to know them. So we're told, right? And we, we do a few things. We either embrace it, say, that's really great. That's wonderful. And doing that, then we have a way of manifesting it. But some of us will believe it. And we'll take it in, but then we'll fixate on it. There's only two weeks left. This is supposed to happen. It's supposed to happen in two more weeks. Okay. Then it won't happen because we have an attachment to the outcome. And it gets a little tricky for all of us. It gets a little tricky because of the fact that we <laughs> we. We want to know, but yet again, we, we don't care to get too attached because we've experienced in this life what getting too attached is. We get disappointed. It doesn't happen, we get disappointed. And when it doesn't happen the way we want it to happen, we get even more frustrated and disappointed. So we suffer. Now, when you, when you want something, right? You're in the heart mind and you direct the mind. And you send that thought out. And the universe says, oh, now you got to remember what your vibrational frequency is. Are you down and out, depressed, upset, irritated, and you're sending this out? Or are you uplifted, pleasant, little bliss, happy, grateful for where you're at, grateful for the life that you have? And you send it out, now which one do you think and do you feel the universal answer? Both. It will continue to give you misery if you're in misery. It will continue to give you joy, happiness, and bliss if you're in joy, happiness, and bliss. See? It's you, each of us, that draw that. It's like on this planet right now. As we always say, how do you view? How do you want to? How do you view your, the life that you desire? How, what is the life that you desire? Do you really know? Can you sit down in silence and discover what the life is that you desire? It, you may find out full circle the life that you have that you have deep gratitude for the very moment you're in. If a piano is out of tune. Doesn't sound good, does it? Same with a guitar or any instrument. But boy, when it's in tune, it's beautiful tone, beautiful sound. It's the same with our frequencies. When our frequencies are not in tune, then we suffer. We suffer. Different degrees. We get disappointed. But when we're tuned, we enjoy. We're in bliss. Happy. Genuinely happy, not, not, not temporarily happy. So 
So if you understand that you, not that body, but the God within it, is part of all there is, all there isn't, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever, that is not going to change. That will not ever change. So no matter what you do, right, in this life, next, thousand lifetimes from now, the God that you are remains. There's no, there's no running from it. There's no, you, yeah, you could try to deny it through the ego mind. It's always there. All of us. Ascended Masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, Saint Germain, Christ, El Moria, Vedantia, Pell, Thoth, Yala, Yeshua, the Archangels, Cherubim, Seraphim, Archetypes, all the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, and dark and beneath earth, all the off-worlders, celestials, galactics, were, and, and this is difficult for many species to understand, we're one. We literally are one. There's, there's just no separation. So you, everybody has, you know, there's different species, different kinds of bodies. And humanoid mostly look different, different color suits. But that which is within those physical forms is no different than the one that's in your physical form. We're all one. You see the displacement in the universe, this one. You see where there's galactic wars and interstellar conflicts and planets in strife and disagreement, discord. It's because they don't know they're one. A civilization becomes super advanced in technologies but still miss the target. Discovering that they're the God within that body. The pure consciousness has many names. And the pure consciousness inhabits all forms everywhere. But when, when the ego mind is in control, that's the challenge for us when we enter these bodies. We, you know, we, we, we then go into the ego mind, the subconscious mind. And you can see the proof. I mean, you can just look around the planet and automatically know ego mind. And this is not judging. It's just knowing. It's just a lot of ego minds front and center. Greed, ego mind. Hatred, ego mind. That ego mind teaches us too. The difference between love and hate, right? The difference between pain and, so and joy. It shows us the difference between things. And the majority of us, that's how we get seduced under its influence of wanting, having, getting, and wanting, and having, and getting. Because it's insecure, it doesn't believe it's secure. That it, it's, it's always frightened, and it always wants to do better, and better, and better, and more, and more, and more, and better, and better, and better. And, and see, in the heart mind, you're in contentment. You know what you are, who you are in that body. You know you're not the body. If we create things, we visualize and create things. And, we, and so we look at this planet, right? Well, there's a lot of us in physical form on this planet. On it, in it, above and below it. And we've decided, we focus on this planet Earth, Gaia, Aria. It has many names. To liberate it. To eliminate the pure evil from the planet. That's what we're doing. Pure evil. No negotiating with pure evil. Right? 
And the only way to eliminate pure evil, not to join it, but to love it, to just absolutely flood it with heart, mind, energy, not evil mind. And that's what we're doing. And that's why it's disintegrating and evaporating. Okay. Hatred, anger, revenge feeds it, keeps it around. Love, bliss, joy eliminates it. It doesn't have a place for existence. So it vaporizes. And we are everywhere, the gods that we are. We're not just here. We're everywhere. We're throughout this galaxy, this universe, and all the connecting universes. We're everywhere. We always have been. And the time will come in our progression that you will discover that you can be everywhere and anywhere all at once. And it all comes in from every direction. So we're not separate. That's the illusion. And we're in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, and generosity, humbleness, tranquility, benevolence, prosperity, abundance. And all of us are one. And we're all love, and we're all God. There's no separation. It doesn't exist. And our God force love light energy is everywhere. No escape from it. We form a massive circle of white firelight around the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia Arya. Where does it come from? The gods that we are, the pure consciousness. Pure, deep, eternal love and gratitude, peace. Flooding, saturated, permeating this planet in this very now, in this moment. Infinity and beyond. So it's a constant flow of deep, eternal love. Highest vibrational frequency. We ascend above the plane, moving right and we come into full contact with this massive ocean of living and you describe it because you can't it, you, there, there's nothing like it here on this planet so you describe it what we know on this planet what we've experienced which is a massive grand finale fireworks display laser light show display the ballroom globe mirror globe when you shine light on floods light everywhere and we combine those into one grand crescendo and one burst, one, one, one bang and burst. And that brings us near the description of the ocean of glitter. We see these little tiny microscopic mirrors are everywhere, perfectly etched, and we enter them, and we begin to understand just that all of us are teaching each other, learning from each other constantly. Doesn't matter what physical form you're in. It really doesn't. Nothing is insignificant when it comes to life. You look at your dog, your cat, bird, trees, grass, cloud, sky, water, rivers, lake streams. Bugs, birds, and you, you, each of us have the ability to know what it's like to be any physical form. We know, we have it, hasn't gone anywhere, doesn't dissipate, it's part of the God that we are. See, if, when, when you know that you're connected, that you're part of all the gods, in all physical forms, in all things. Then you begin to realize parts of you are in all of these physical forms. 
isn't it? I mean, it's amazing when it when it finally dawns on you that you can just by being around these. What, you know, what do your pets teach you? What do they teach you? Don't sweat the small stuff. Don't carry anger, fear. You ever notice that, you know, the dogs and cats, unless they're just horribly abused, they don't stay upset long. They, they play. They have fun. They're trying to teach us. The gods within them are trying to teach us. So how do you teach others that are so blind? Well, you take on physical forms that they're going to hopefully notice, right? That's why all things our teachers, all things. If you take a tree, right, different trees, the oak tree is strong and its root system is deep. And it withstands great pressure. And it can bend, but not much. So in major storms and winds and everything, you can see a lot of trees that just break, right? Then there's the bamboo tree. And the bamboo tree teaches you how to bend, flex, move with life, and not fight it. That's the difference that those trees teach us. The oak, unbendable. The bamboo, very flexible and bendable. Which one do you choose? Because they're giving you the different variances. And it's all up to us, each one of us, how we choose. While we're in these physical forms. Now, we're immediately met with columns of light. See? And there's different carriers for that light. You have uh, Archangel Raphael who carries the emerald green flaming healing column of light, right? Well, are, are we not part of Archangel Raphael, the God that's within his physical form, his, her physical form? Of course. So we created this column of light to remind us all the gods that we are in these bodies, these are reminders that we are the power of healing these bodies. And then we have Archangel Raphael. He carries a column of light, violet, blue, purple, flaming light. It's there to remind us of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve as the gods that we are in these bodies. Then we have the white fire light, column of light. Now, we all created this column of light to remind us all that we are protected. Do you honestly believe that we wouldn't be? That divine perfection isn't protected? The gods that we are isn't protected? And we, we hold a high frequency. This is, this is a, a, a teacher this light. So as we hold a high frequency of pure deep eternal love, the lower dark matter survival matter frequencies can't come in. They can't invade us, infect us, twist us, trick us. So no demon possession, no attachments, none of this stuff. But, see, when, when we're cognizant, when we're aware that, you know, we, it's easy to fall into the lower frequencies just out of anger and stress and frustration. So when we do that, and it's, whether it's consciously or unconsciously, we can drop our frequency and go into hate, Anger, revenge, envy, hurriedness, fear, stress, worry. And it lowers our frequency field. 
when this happens, we create a breach in our white fire armor. And all the lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies come flooding in. And then we have possibilities of demon possession attachments and many other things. But see, the heartland, the gods that we are, we create fail-safes. But it doesn't mean we're consciously aware of those fail-safes. Some of us kind of, maybe. And so we create a double column of light. We create this to remind us the gods that we are. The purple transmuting flame and the violet ray. Purple transmuting flame is the first part. We can bring that in, transmute all these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutralized substance, send them to pure consciousness where they are no more. The second part of this column is the violet ray. This is there to remind us that we can bring in the violet ray right behind the purple transmuting flame and cleanse and purify the area where these lower dark matter survival matter frequencies were. Sealing the breach in our white fire armor and restoring our vibrational harmony to the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest deepest, and the purest of the purest purest, eternal love, gratitude, and peace. That's how it works. Then we're met with another column of light that we create that to remind ourselves to help us come out of amnesia. This is the golden white pink light. This column of light has been created by us to remind us, the gods that we are, that we are the sun, the sunlight, rainbow, rain. We are the sun sets and the sun rises, the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, the streams, the mountains. We are the soils, the animals, the trees, the forests, the cloud, everything. Everything is us. We're everything. So when you when you see you know, you see things in physical form and you say, That's beautiful, that's really beautiful, and it really is truly beautiful. But what we don't know that that's you, the God in that body. So we don't correlate that. So when we look at those sunsets, and the rainbows, and anything that we're taken aback of such beauty and grandeur, it doesn't connect. But it's beginning to. When you look at it through the heart and mind, you say, that is the God that I am. That lake, that ocean, that's the God that I am. These are, we, we create these to remind us, to help us out of amnesia. That's why the archangels are there, the ascended masters, all of these things, all of these happenings and occurrences is to help us. When we create the column, the crystalline light tower column, right? And we create the sphere within it. And we create the golden white bowl of light within the sphere. And we create all of the rings, multicolored rings that go to infinity and beyond around the golden white bowl. We create the white super bright cloud to remind us what it feels like to be embraced by the God that we are within the body. So this light comes in through our chest into the heart-mind. And it feels like a warm embrace that never ends because it is the God hugging you. You are the God. And these are all done to bring us out of this incessant amnesia. Okay? So the God within us, who we truly are, is, is creating. We're creating these things as markers to help us remember to give us guidance. It's like the golden ocean on, on the tower. We design that, we create that so the golden ocean can come cascading down, flooding, saturating, and permeating this planet and all life, the highest supreme value in the universe. We do that because we are the ocean. 
the golden ocean. We also are the essence of the golden ocean. This is pure, deep, eternal love. We, the gods that we are, are made of and from pure, deep, eternal love. It's, you know, to, to identify that we aren't the body so we, we, we ascend above the planet and we, we step outside the body to know that we are the God stepping outside the case, right? The, the vessel and hovering effort, so effortlessly above it so we can enjoy that because it's fun to do, you know? It's like the meditative sphere. We create that sphere. We created it. We created that sphere over four years ago. Hundreds of millions of us in deep meditation every day for over four years, seven days a week. We're the light energy. We're the love. That's what's shifting this planet. All those meditations continue to grow, expand, intensify. It's flooding this entire planet. And you can look at the planet and see what's happening through your heart mind, in silence, in a meditative state, and be a watcher. And you see all this dark matter and all this black goo and all this conflict and fear and worry and stress, which is contained in the black goop, which is a very low, deathly frequency, and the pure evil, and you see, as we've created this field in our atmosphere that is vaporizing this stuff, it's like little, little sparks, like little miniature flash bulbs. And then, you, and then we create this, this sky that's a beautiful, shimmering, golden white pink light and if any of it makes it that high up in our atmosphere they're completely vaporized you can see all these flashes there's no escape none of them will leave this planet and none of them will be literally allowed to ever incarnate ever again including the AI goop the rogue AI. We're doing that. There's not some force out, outside of us. It is a collective effort to cleanse this planet and to bring it into a God planet paradise status. That's what we're doing. That's real. That's not an illusion. That is real. It's happening right now. Every single microscopic second. This is a magical moment when we are truly present to it. We can deeply enjoy our lives in all its mysterious, mystical ways. As we open ourselves to the possibility that this moment really does contain magic and deeply relax into it, then we become magical for this day. Hold the intention to be intimately, deeply, and completely connected to the magic of the entire universe become so unified with this field of energy and intelligent love that you cannot help but to experience the divine infinite beings we all truly are. I'll join you in the meditation and return to close us out.
taken easy, slow breath into the nose. And an easy, slow breath out of the mouth. Be still. We are here to share love and be loved. Love is the cause of joy in our lives. And fear is the cause of all suffering. And each moment is our choice as to what we wish to experience. So check it out. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night and the following morning. And we will return here tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern to continue our reverse aging health call. And Saturday, May 28th, 2022, 3 p.m. Eastern to continue our global guided meditation call.